Hello Nigeria, welcome to Newsline. I am Becky Madujemo. I know you've looked forward to this week's edition of the program. Be rest assured that everything lined up is fantastic. Our friends living with blindness will open the show with a bang. With your eyes closed, they will make yours pop out. Now, we all clean our mouth. Well, hopefully, we all do. But are we doing it earnestly to abolish? Analysts say there has been a decline since 2000 from 246 million to 168 million in 2012. But factors such as poverty, insecurity, and instability are hindering the progress in sub saharan Africa. My father is dead. That is why I'm going to help my mother. It is hard to parents. Maybe they don't have school fees or something like that. So maybe they, they, they may decide to give them one or two things to go and sell. The children, they have no childhood. They are abused and they don't have a voice. Office of the Senate President on the occasion of the World Day Against Child Labour with the thing and child labour from the supply chain. Bukola, Bukola Saraki says the Senate has embarked on a comprehensive review of labour laws and the Child Rights Act to eliminate any gaps, offer adequate protection and provide mechanism to redress in cases of child labour. He also revealed that the Apex Legislature is working to ensure a uniform enactment and enforcement of child rights in all states of the nation. The federal government's social intervention initiatives being implemented are testimonies of the APC-led government's commitment to improving the lots of the less privileged. Minister of Information reported, and we are targeting 5.5 million puppies all over the Nigeria. Already the pilot scheme has started. We have been able to agree on the menu and how much per puppy. The eight Alaji Kafaru Oluole Tinubu annual Ramadan lecture featured Professor Amit Sonny and Sheikh Abdul Latif Muhammad Bello as guest lecturers. In Lagos, Abdullah Mohammed, NT News. Muslims have been challenged to use the holy month of Ramadan to pray for peace and stable economy in Nigeria. An Islamic cleric, Ustaz Abubakar Sadiq, gave the challenge to overcome its challenges. The supplicants also committed the life of former Chief Justice of the Federation, Muhammad Lawal Uwais, to God, as he clocked 80 years. In Abuja, Saileho Abdullahi, NTA News. Good governance will deliver dividends of democracy to the people rather than political restructuring is more important in improving the livelihood of Nigerians. Speakers made this known at a lecture organized by the Lagos State Council of the Nigerian Union of Journalists to mark the June 12, 1993 presidential election. Joy Ken Abakboya has details. The annulled June 12, 1993 presidential election. The federal structure, whether it is true federalism or not, or not true federalism. Late Chief Moshud Abiola, regarded by many as the hero of democracy, ran for the annulled June 12 election in 1993 on the platform of the Social Democratic Party. In Lagos, Joy Ken Abapuya, NTA News. Now, the federal government has again restated its commitment towards energizing the creative industry for a vibrant role in revamping the nation's economy. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed stated this at the 12th Africa Movie Academy ceremony in Port Harcourt. River State, Anthony Forsing tells us more. Just as the event was large, the dignitaries equally. The event has been important social and economic benefits to the state. It is important for us as a country to look at this sector as a new frontier, especially as we begin to talk about diversifying the nation's economy. Because in any knowledge-based economy, creativity is the major pillar that you invest. Speakers at the ceremony told the Africa Movie Academy Award story and how it has come this To leave ancestral homes, uh, so a remediation is, is possible. 
Minister of State for Solid Minerals, Baobari, said plans are underway to ensure a standardized legal roadmap for mining so as to avoid future exposure through illegal mining. Niger State Commissioner of Environment, Solid Minerals and Forestry Resources, Dr. Ali Tangwagi, said the state will register and train miners in safety procedure, thereby boosting economic activities. All these artisanal miners can all be channeled together and sure of poisons and other things will now be passed. Dr. Mustafa Jibir, State Commissioner for Health, disclosed that already advocacy meetings with community leaders are today's Sunday service. The Bible gave us injunctions to always pray for our leaders. The service featured rendition of soul-lifting songs. At the eternal sacred other of the cherubim and seraphim, it was thanksgiving the law as the men and women thanked God for his steadfastness and grace over the years. Special Senior Apostle Michael of Samoa enjoined Christians to always thank God irrespective of their situation. Even in these dire times, there's plenty of reasons why we should thank God. In Abuja, on Laji Day, Bello, NTA News. Meanwhile, Christian leaders in the country have described the federal government's victory over both the church, where a special prayer session was held for God's intervention in the present economic and security reality of the nation. In Lafia, Tessie O'Meary, NTA News. A book to address marital challenges has been presented to the public in Abuja. Justin Bem Unyi reports that the book, which is titled Christian Marriage Before, During and After Its Celebration, is authored by Reverend Father Christopher Nubia. Christian marriage, a divine commitment and institution ordained by God to be appreciated by spouses in some instances. women and youths in Kano. Abdullahi Mustafa has details. During a stakeholders' meetings some few weeks ago, Governor Abdullah Omar Ganduji unveils a new strategy towards reducing unemployment in the state. It is tagged Mass Economic Empowerment Program. Under the initiative, at least 70 women and youth are to be empowered in various income generation activities from each of the 44 local government areas of the state. Already, 1,500 have benefited from the program in two batches. Governor Abdullah Omar Ganduji was represented at the launch of the third batch by his deputy professor Hafiz Aubakar, who announced that 3,640 beneficiaries are targeted under the first phase. Items distributed include rice, flour, beans, sewing, grinding, and pasta-making machines. Each of the 520 beneficiaries was also given 5,000 naira. Kano State Commissioner of Information Muhammad Garba, who also chairs a high-powered committee for the implementation of the Economic Empowerment Program, says 140 beneficiaries will be produced by the eight metropolitan area councils, while the 36 outside the state capital are to produce 70 each. Some of the beneficiaries thank the state government for the gesture and promised legitimate use of the empowerment items given them. In Kano, Abdullahi Mustafa, NTA News. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo has described the death of the technical director of the Nigerian Football Federation and former coach of the Super Eagles, Amodu Shwaibu, as shocking. Professor Oshimbajo said his death uh, just days after the death of former player and coach Stephen Keshi. Nigeria has lost yet another dedicated public servant who worked tirelessly to bring honor to Nigeria. The vice president added that he led the national team to World Cup tournaments and ushered the court to serve as a national coach on a number of occasions. He added that Shwaibu's life was dedicated to finding and grooming some of Nigeria's best soccer talents and providing them the leadership and guidance that enabled them to excel. Professor Shibaja father said Amodi Shwaibu's work as national coach of Nigeria's national team brought gladness to the nation and fulfillment to many. Meanwhile, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Yakubu Dogara, has condoled with the nation over the sudden death of another former coach of the Nigerian Super Eagles, Shwaibu Amodu. A statement by his spokesman, Turaki Hassan, said Dogara described the late former Super Eagles coach as a true nationalist who 
dedicated his lifetime to serving his country. He lamented that Nigerian football is under trial as a result of the sudden death of Amodu and as he died when the country was still reeling from the demise of his colleague Stephen Keshi. He said Amodu's demise would forever remain painful as it came when the nation's football is in dire need of his experience for reforms. The speaker prayed that God grants the nation and his family the fortitude to bear the loss. Former Vice President Atiku Abubakar on better outing at 2016 Rio Olympics has Hussein Bolt Clark's second fastest time in 100 meters this year. Kenny Mabudike has details on our sports update. Former Vice used his warning to rivals after recording the second fastest time of the year in winning a 100 meters race in Jamaica despite stumbling out of his starting blocks. Boat ran 9.88 seconds at the Racers Grand Prix in Kingston Saturday. Only Frenchman Jimmy Vicau has gone quicker at 9.86 seconds. Shelly Ann Fraser Price won the women's race in 11.09 seconds. With sports update, Kenen Imabodike, NTG News. And now let's take a quick look at the weather picture across the country for tomorrow. Hello and welcome once again to the weather forecast. I am Elizabeth Akwama. There is a system around the Cameroon that is propagating into the country and is expected to give overnight activities that will linger into the morning hours, giving thunderstorms from the central cities down to the coast and a few places in the north will be cloudy. Later in the day, in the evening night period, isolated cases of thunderstorms are not unlikely in places around Kano, Castina, Sokoto, Axis, and the high ground areas of the central cities and the inland cities of the south. An exercise Saturday, June 18, 2016. Candidate who scored 180 and above in Jam and made Abwad first or second choice. Those who seek change of institution, direct entry candidates, those who scored below 180 cut off mark and seek admission into pre degree and degree foundation into Afe Babalola International Study Center, Ibada. Those awaiting results of SSCE and equivalent. For more information on requirement for undergraduate programs, direct entry, including nursing, screening materials, and centers, please visit the www.abwa.edu.ng or call 081-277-2121 or 080-3070-6711. Abwa, a vision in motion. What? What are you doing? Stop! Stop! There you go. Yay, end of me! who identify and nurture the uniqueness in our kids. To all the unique children of the world, Indomie noodles, tasty nutrition, good for... As the sun rises over the hills of Abuja, so too dawns a new way of life and exquisite standard of living. Enjoy your own originally designed and quality built home in the serene and secure environment of Sunrise Hills. Experience this uplifting lifestyle with breathtaking views of the city. Rise above. Sunrise Hills is unlike anything you've ever seen before. A new way of life is dawning in the heart of Nigeria. Feel weak, body pains, feverish, 
and easy. But be sure to verify its authenticity. Make sure you check that it's original by scratching the code panel to reveal a set of code numbers. Text the unique number to a short code 38351 confirming the authenticity of the P-Alaxin anti-malarial drug. SMS text is free and available to all networks. <laughs> Powerful and effective P. Alaxin always defeats malaria. Student, I major in physics education. I teach physics and basic science to kids between the ages of 9 to 17. As a science teacher, teaching students about energy is one of the most interesting topics. Kids are playful, they are active. It is very interesting explaining to them that their activities can actually be converted into power. The Shell Kinetic and Solar Pitch is the perfect way to explain to them how energy is generated from their sporting activities can actually be converted into power. Science is fun. It inspires. It teaches us we can convert our own energy into light. I want to become an engineer when I grow up. What if your idea could change the world? Thanks for staying on the line. Ability in disability, that's what our first report is all about. It is so inspiring that it will leave you with a smile. The story began when Lynn Lenike went to spend a day with the students living with blindness at the Vocational School for the Blind in Oshodi, Lagos. The school is run by the Nigeria Society for the Blind. As much as Lynn thoroughly enjoyed her stay with them, she says one will truly appreciate the gift of sight only when one experiences the extra mile, the blood to learn daily living skills and handcrafts. The bit making, it depends on the one you want to learn, tell the various parts, like if you want to make key holder. What I'm making now is a key holder, okay. and we use small shapes of beads to make the key holder, okay. as well as a bigger fishing line. Okay. We place four beads first at the end here four beads and then we we'll place three 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 till you get to the extreme for anyone who is in love with tie and dye popularly known as adire these students have mastered the skills of producing quality and attractive designs there is one form that we use that form they have created a design on that form we just when we wet our met our candle so we just we spread this thing on the table so everything is flat. So we now we took our candle, our foam, you put it inside the candle, small, small, and um, stamp it. In spite of their physical challenge, they are not discouraged, as you have seen in this report. Can you walk me to the car? Of course. Of course I can. Your guy came. It's very, very important. And as you're walking, you know, you move it side so that you can be able to dictate any um, obstacle, you know, so. I think we are there now. Thank you. We can only imagine what life is like seen through your mind's eyes. Kudos to those students. Next up, when children are physically, emotionally or sexually abused, the effect is usually long-lasting and damaging, not only to the victims but also the society. To correct the anomaly, child rights advocates and concerned citizens say two major factors must be upheld and implemented. They are respect for the child and an end to child abuse. When Jane Ojuku attended a forum in Lagos on the subject matter, she came across people who had been abused at one time or the other. They tell their stories and how they overcame. The story of Taiwo Akelami, who was abused from age six, will destabilize you. My mother would go to the market, me with this particular woman who was her neighbor. And this woman would strip me naked, do with a six-year-old boy what a woman should do with a man. And so, as a teenager, as a child, I lost my virginity. Not only did I lose my virginity, as a, as a teenager, I started having anal sex, in today's parlance you call it homosexuality. When my father wanted to kill me, he would beat me, he would, he would tie my legs and would tie my hands. My mother would look at me and say, oh, my last one, you are a useless child, only comparable, comparable to a dog. In school, I was playing with my friend, my friend climbed a tree, and when time was coming down, he fell. 
he was rushed to the hospital a day after, two days after he died. And my friend and my teacher said from today they should call me Satan. So my childhood was a bountiful basket of abuses. Taiwo is not alone in this kind of molestation, as millions of children in Africa experience one form of abuse or the other in their lifetime. Apart from sexual abuse, physical and emotional abuse, neglect and abandonment of children also constitute abuse. Unfortunately, most parents are unaware of this fact. This young girl was abandoned by her parents. What career would you like to pursue? I would like to be a nurse. When they are pregnant and their family reject them, we normally take them, take care of them, and you know, so that was how we made, came in contact with her mother. And she gave birth to her under us. And after a while, she abandoned her and left. Though she is lucky, as she is now in the care of the Children Compassionate Orphanage in Lagos, thousands of others are not so lucky, as they are still wandering the streets with no one to care for them. Accusing fingers point to parents and guardians as the major culprits in child abuse through neglect, abandonment and battery. The women particularly, they get easily provoked, too many pressure on the woman in the house, pressure of eating, pressure of the husband, and when this pressure mount up, they pounce on the child and do a child. I mean, many, many have killed their children in the case of you know, uh, expressing anger. Many abused children, experts say, grow to become child molesters themselves, criminals and violent behavior. When you want to take evidence from children, you make sure that it's only people in juvenile welfare center cases, JWC as it is called, who are women that take charge of such cases. Government was implored to increase their involvement through policy framework and funding. Those were touching stories that could have been avoided. Children deserve respect and must therefore be treated right. It is common knowledge that most Nigerians, wherever they reside in the world, are record breakers in their fields of endeavor. True, Nigerians are great achievers by any standard. Their entrepreneurial skills, backed by their resilience, are the major contributory factors. In this report, Abdullahi Mohammed focuses on the ordinary Hawker, Hawker on the highways of Lagos, whose resilience he observes as second to none. Though it's illegal to hawk on the streets of Lagos, many young Nigerians do it anyway. What caught Newsline's attention, however, is the energy and marketing skills exhibited by these hawkers on major highways in Lagos, which by any standard is a force to reckon with in the field. I spend a lot of money. So this one, I just bought this one. So we thought this thing. Yeah, I do collect money from people. Depends on how you and them bargain. This may lead to loss of goods and sometimes capital. But this does not demoralize the Lagos Highway Hawker. As long as there is gridlock, the hopes of these resilient and enterprising hawkers remains intact. Those guys are dogged. Their line of work is not for the lily livered. Now to culture. Ijoko Festival is an annual celebration of the Ijoko people of Ogun State. It attracts tourists. The rich cultural heritage of the people of the town was a focus of attraction as masquerades from communities that make up Ijoko town trill the gathering with amazing displays. <laughs> That's not all. Other cultural dances, singing competition, as well as array of historic masquerades from various Yoruba Egba communities were all sights to behold. State. Expectedly, they rolled out the drums again to celebrate their culture as handed down by their ancestors. Take a look. Obodo Amankwa Square was agog as the sons and daughters of AK Home and in Diaspora converged to partake in the age long cultural festival called Ewanshi. Friends and well wishers from across the globe were there to felicitate with the people. It was a roll call of who is who in the political sphere of the state. Iguanshi is a cultural festival. 
day, we now say, oh Lord, thank you for protecting us in this hostile environment and guide us for the next year. This festival rekindles the victorious joy we had during this, the war, the great wars, when AK was almost annihilated by our neighbors. Friends and well wishers of AK and the arts and culture expert, Dr. Ferdinand Danyekwe, speak on the relevance of the festival to the Nigerian nation. To play host to, to, to numerous friends, well wishers of uh, AK people and the local government as a whole. So people have traveled all over the world to come and witness this culture. And it's uh, that of happiness. Everybody is happy. This kind of experience is one of those that GLOW is the largest growing network in new data subscription. The master plan came into its own. When you ask GLOW about this, what do they say? Well, it doesn't stop there. It only just started. Enjoy our new data overload. Double your data on every plan, like 6 gigabytes for 2,000 Naira, 12 gigabytes for 3,000 Naira, and 24 gigabytes for 5,000 Naira. Dial star 777 hash to select a plan. The largest data network. Glow Grandmasters of Data. What? What are you doing? Stop! Stop! There you go! Yay! End of me! Friesland Campina Wamco, the company that produces Peak, Three Crowns and other Frisco brands of milk, has renewed its Memorandum of Understanding with the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. At Debola Brooklyn Sunday reports that the aim is to increase local content. For over 60 years, Friesland Campina Wamco Nigeria PLC has been a nourishing companion of most Nigerian homes through its flagship brand, Peak Milk. The company has continued to play a leading role in the production, processing, packaging, marketing and distribution of its products in Nigeria. At inception, the products were 100% imported. To renew their commitment to improved local content, the managing director, some board members and the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Audu Ogbe, signed the new Memorandum of Understanding. Continue to grow, continue to improve, and continue to serve us. We will continue to be here for you. If we had started this project as far back as 1954, the local content should have been 80 to 90 percent by this time. We have uh, Peak, Three Crowns, uh, uh, My Boy, Frizo, and Fristy in Nigeria. The nutrients inside and the nutrition that is provided is customized for Nigerian population. So it has vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that are specialized based on the consumer learning that we had over the last 60 years operating in Nigeria. So it's made for Nigerians. And I think the other thing is, is uh, uh, the high quality uh, that we are well uh, known for, uh, the, what we call the quality from the grass to the glass. The Dairy Development Program is an initiative of Friesland Campina Wamco Nigeria PLC with a decision to invest 3 billion naira in its smallholders dairy farmer program in Nigeria. We are inviting uh, the young uh, graduates uh, who are unemployed uh, to take the opportunity of uh, participating uh, in the small sc uh, scale uh, holding uh, to own their own uh, S of cattle and produce their milk. We have a ready market, we will take the milk off them and uh, they will be in employment. This plan has been will be congregated in one place and then all these uh, dairy companies will can easily reach them for the purpose of uh, buying collection of this uh, milk. The company promised to maintain its number one position as the nation's leading milk manufacturing company.
None, no doubt most Nigerians are proud to be Nigerians and will resist any attempt to make them otherwise. Yes, currently there is relentless effort by government, non-governmental organizations and even individuals for Nigerians to extend their patriotism to consuming made in Nigeria products. Are Nigerians complying? Kadija Takombi in Mina gives us an idea using a major market in that town as the reference point. 45-year-old Abubakar Ibrahim, a civil servant on grade level 4, earns less than 30,000 naira per month. Through a loan, he was able to build this two-room apartment where he lives with his family. Abubakar says maintaining and feeding his family has been a major challenge, particularly in recent times. Sometimes I eat rice a week or two weeks because a mudu, local rice mudu, is now... 420 naira. I eat meat monthly. Abubakar's situation is similar to what many low-income earners and ordinary Nigerians are facing. Niger State is one of the largest producers of local rice in Nigeria, and it is expected that the commodity will be cheap in the state. However, a visit to the major market in Mina revealed that the local rice, which used to cost 200 naira per measure, is now between 420 naira and 450 naira. In a bid to get to the root cause of the increase in the price of the commodity, our news crew visited some rice mills in Mina and spoke with some of the dealers in local rice business. For the rice, it's fat, it's fat thousand naira before. Now it's eight thousand nine thousand in the seller. From farmer, then just increase money. Following the increase in the price of foreign vegetable oil, the locally produced granite oil also increased from 230 naira per bottle to three transport operators claim little increase in transport fares following the fuel price increase. You know the condition in the country is very hard, so that's why we just have a little increase in the price of the transport. We bought fuel at 180, 200, 250, yet the prices of goods are a little bit lower than it is today. So people are using the opportunity to exploit others. For this respondent, government should revisit the establishment of marketing board to regulate the cost of both foreign and locally produced essential commodities and check the exploitation of Nigerians by unscrupulous traders and businessmen. Sometimes some imaginary persons make prices go up unnecessarily. Always bear in mind you get your money in the right manner, in the approved way, without cheating others. We buy a muddle of rice they have beaten the bottom of the plate so that they will put less. You are exploiting others, and God is aware. I pray that we will change before it is too late. No matter what, the message remains patronized made in Nigeria goods. It is true that the race is not for the swift. This is why sometimes people work hard and have very little intent. It's upright. So anything that is negative in terms of one's attitude is completely irreligious. This is the major reason why Nigeria is facing what we are actually, the mess we're in. If you look at some things that we are passing through, it's because of the wuru that we are doing. With the present administration's fight against corrupt practices, some people are urging the government to put in place structures that will improve the welfare of Nigerians and make cutting corners less attractive. Others also called on government to develop a road map through the provision of national anti-corruption strategies that will strengthen the capacity of all M's to fight the menace. Is that there is no effective sanction against Cotton Corner, especially the issue of corruption with due reservation that Mr. President Try to run towards the Terracine to save the situation because there might be a second bomb blast or another attack. Run far away and take cover. Make sure you are safe first. Yes, it is in our nature to sympathize over the hurt. But remember, only trained personnel can help in such situations. When in a secured environment, promptly call relevant authorities and help will come. For anonymous reporting, call 09630-3250 to 5 or 0813-2222-106. If you see something, say something. Nigeria, unite against terrorism. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture.
There is a reason Africa is called the new frontier. What was once potential is now an opportunity ready to be seized. Once revered for our resources, today's wealth lies in our people. People who build the cities that shape the future. People who know an idea in one place means business in another. A generation for whom technology means there are no... These technologies are being deployed to all the states across the Federation, as well as the internally displaced people's camps. The President, Muhammad Buhari, and his team are committed to this fight. The federal government of Nigeria, in line with its anti-corruption agenda and posture, will fight a total war against fake drugs and other unwholesome regulated products in order to ensure that Nigerians remain healthy and well. Lend your support and join NAFDAQ to rid the country of fake drugs and unwholesome regulated products. NAFDAQ, safeguarding the health of the nation. We are here to serve, and indeed, Nigerians would get the service they have longed for and which they rightly deserve. The leader today that we have in Nigeria is one the world has been waiting for. Nigeria is seen in a new and a different, very positive light. We quote uh, prison professionals, artisans, and others. Don't sit down hopeless and helpless. Get up and get empowered. Apply at n-power.gov.ng and learn about where you fit. Details of physical registration points near you will be announced soon. NPower is an initiative of the Social Investment Program of the Federal Government of Nigeria. Thanks for staying on the line. It was way back in 1989 that the Assistant Director, Designs and Production Services of the NTA, Eyang Emma, passed on. 27 years later, his son, who was barely a baby, brought back memories of his late father by his decision to get married. Family, friends and well-wishers converged on And give honor unto her husband. I know that um, the entrance of a new uh, addition to the family, uh, the joy will, you know, be full. And I wish them some understanding and adherence to the teachings of God. The couple executed their first public assignment together and afterwards, took to the dance floor. He's an amazing man, so I'm happy um, um, married to him today. The kindest person I've ever met, um, you know, super, super supportive, always there for me. Trust the NTA family, they were on ground to rejoice with their former boss and colleague. <laughs> Congrats to yet another of NTA's investments. All the best to the couple. Now to a health matter. Oral hygiene is our business tonight. Poor oral hygiene presents a variety of ways to decay, mouth odor, plaque, ulcers, among others. These effect, this effects can be severe or mild. But the point to note is that poor... Basically just eat healthy. Eat your vegetables, eat your proteins, eat your fish and fruits and all that. Refined sugars in way of chocolate, like I mentioned, fizzy drinks, all those things are not particularly good for the teeth. Periodic visit to a dentist is suggested as a way of avoiding dental problems. But how often do Nigerians visit dentists? Normally I visit dentists, you know, uh, twice in in a month? I visit dentist twice every month. One, to make sure that my teeth doesn't have, I don't have mouth odor and my teeth doesn't have ache. Bad breath or mouth odor, as many call it, is a major fallout of poor oral hygiene. It can either be severe or mild. Mouth odor that can stem from not brushing your teeth, not taking care of your teeth well. That we notice that once the person begins to practice good oral hygiene, this is the dentist, the mouth odor goes. 
There are some odors that come from the mouth that are results of some disease in the nose. If you have sinusitis that is chronic, for example, there's inflammation of the sinuses, if you have some nasal congestion or some nasal problems that stays for a long time, there'll be an odor in the mouth because the connection, there's a connection between the mouth and the nose. So anything that drips from the nose into the mouth is going to produce some odors like that. If you have some problems in the throat, for example, some cancers or some other issues that can come up as an odor. People that have diabetes have a specific kind of odor. It's a, it's a mouth odor. Some other problems in the stomach, some other liver issues can bring back bad odor. Nigerians have been asked to maintain oral health by changing toothbrushes every three months, using dental floss, as well as visiting dentists twice a year. This is to help improve the quality of life and general well-being. That was quite informative. I urge you to imbibe the message. He flew like a butterfly and stung like a bee. Yes, the greatest of them all, Muhammad Ali, has passed on, but his footprints cannot be erased from the sands of time. Here is a tribute to this great man. Let's take a break first. Suicide bombers are not spirits. They are not ghosts. They are human beings like you and me. They live amongst us. They are your neighbors. They are your friends today, but terrorists tomorrow. So you must know your neighbor now. Security begins with you and me. Know your neighbor. Be vigilant. Be security conscious. Report suspicious persons, objects, and movements to the police and other security agencies. The security of our nation is a duty for you and me. If you see something, say something. Nigeria unite against terrorism. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Glad to have you back. In the first week of June, precisely on the 3rd, the world woke up to the unexpected and sad news of the death of the greatest of them all in the field of boxing, the heavyweight champion, Muhammad Ali. Here's a tribute to the legend, packaged by Oinaya Kaluoka, who also had a chat with a great admirer who shares the same name with the icon. I'm going to float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. His hands can't hit what his eyes can't see. That is Muhammad Ali for you, the three-time heavyweight champion of the world who let the world know so much more. That's why I say I'm the greatest. Born in 1942 as Cassius Clay, he changed his name when he converted to Islam in 1964. Cassius Clay is a name no more, is that right? Yes, sir. It's Muhammad Ali. Known for his unorthodox style of boxing, Muhammad Ali was fast of fist and foot and, of course, his lips too. All of you who don't like me because of my big mouth, that was only publicity. Besides boxing, Muhammad Ali had other interesting sides of him. He had a good sense of humor. Ah, rumble, young man, rumble. A preacher and motivational speaker who was quick to stand for what he believes. He seems to be good in everything he does. When he acts, it looks so real. As a family man, Muhammad Ali was loving and doting. She don't like me to talk too much, do you? Yeah. In 1981, he put his fame to use when he saved a man who attempted suicide. In the last half of his life, Ali battled with Parkinson's disease. What more can be said of the late boxing legend who started his boxing career at the age of 12? These qualities endured him to millions around the world who loved him for different reasons. One of Muhammad Ali's fans is a young vibrant reporter of the NTA assigned to the National Assembly. Incidentally, he bears the same name with the late legend. Hello, good day, Muhammad Ali. And uh, how are you? Whenever I call my name, people react. They always say, what, what's ever they say, there's Muhammad Ali, ah? Uh -huh. And people react, ah? Uh -huh. In the first time I met them, before by talks had come to mind. I wondered if it was somebody, whether it was him or it was just a joke. Since his primary school days in 1976, he has always admired and watched the legend fight. Muhammad Ali is uh, somebody that uh, 
I really like. His curiosity to know the boxer more led him into being a sports writer back in the days and a lover of his books. That is, in the book, he said if he's boxing, he, he talks to his opponent, and that has psychological effect on his uh, uh, opponent. Although Muhammad Ali, the reporter, loves to watch the boxer, but he never had the guts to step into the boxing ring. Actually, when I was younger, I was a troublesome child. But then, the fact that I was so skinny, I never win my boxing bouts. Whenever I engage in physical uh, country, I always lose. Well, for me, I had always imagined and wished for a meeting with the late legend in the ring. But since it is just a wish and a mission impossible, now is the opportunity to box the late legend admirer and at the same time his namesake. Let's give it a try. But we don't have the ambulance close. Oh, yeah, the problem is that this, ma this Muhammad Ali I'm talking to is not the one that is brave in fighting. Can you see I'm challenging him to a fight? And he's, <laughs> and he's the greatest Muhammad back. Ali has never fought a woman. So if you want to fight me, get me a giant, somebody like Muhammad Abdul Qadir, <laughs> who will get me your hell banging. <laughs> was hilarious thank you ali was indeed the greatest but the champion of all time continue to rest in peace that time has come for us to go we will meet again next week sunday god willing with exclusive stories just for you stay on the line thanks for being such great company tonight good night and god bless nigeria